Welcome to Lofty Pursuits in Tallahassee, Florida, where we make hard candy. We're going to use this old Thomas Mills pillow mint cutter for this candy, and the flavor is going to be black currant. And this is because somebody contacted us through the forums asking if we could make black currant candy, and I'd never heard of the flavor of black currant. And there's a reason for this. I'm in the United States, and black currants were banned here for most of the 20th century. They're fairly common in Europe. But here, this delicious flavor is almost unknown. This is another one of our machines made by the Thomas Mills Company of Philadelphia. I love this machine. It's all brass and it's steel and it was built 125 years ago. And it has a bunch of metal knives in the bottom and a big brass wheel on the top that presses the hot candy into the knives. The knives are still sharp after all these years. I did have to clean them, but I didn't have to resharpen them. But when the candy gets pressed into the knives, it would stick in the wheel. So to solve this problem, they installed a little brass gear that spins using the knives as a gear itself, ejecting the candy out. It's wonderful to see how smoothly this machine works and how well it was built all those years ago. The craftsmanship of the blades alone is worth taking notice of. They obviously cast the disc, cut slits in it for the blades to be inserted, drilled little holes, and then pinged the holes wide to trap the blades in place. I assure you they're in tight even after all these years. These machines were used for everything from making Christmas mints, to restaurant mints, to just general drops. According to the Thomas Mills catalog from the time period, we have a number one machine, and they made several different versions of this in different sizes. Hello, I'm Greg, and I'm the owner of Lofty Pursuits, and I hope you've been enjoying our videos. I wanted to apologize for the break in production of videos. You see, we got a new location, and we moved our store across the street to a much bigger space. We added breakfast, and we over doubled the size of our candy area, and we hope someday you can come and visit. But in the meantime, let's get back to making candy. We've taken our blackcurrant flavoring and mixed it in the pot, added the food coloring, and we've poured it on our candy cooling table. So let's take some time to talk about blackcurrant flavor and why it was banned in the United States. Now we're going to be talking about black currants, red currants, fake currants, and pine trees. And those of you in Europe who know what this is, just bear with us for a moment because this is going to be a little strange. The United States has its moments and this is one of them. When we test the candy with the spatula and make sure the temperature is correct, we're going to add some citric acid here. You see, black currants have a slight acidic taste, and we need to put some citric acid in to make sure our candies have the same mouthfeel. If as somebody who grew up in the United States has discovered if they've ever gone to Europe, purple Skittles taste different in Europe than they do in the United States. That's because here, they're grape flavored, and over there, they're black currant flavored. And a lot of this has to do with what Americans' mouths are used to. You see, they ended up banning black currants from being grown in the United States in 1911. And they did this because of pine trees. Yes, pine trees. The specific pine tree we're talking about is the white pine that grows in the northeast of the United States. You see, this pine tree was critical to the Industrial Revolution that brought us these cool machines. It is the tree that was cut down, turned into lumber, grew fast, was strong, and we built buildings out of it. And it was dying from a disease called pine rust like crazy. Entire forest stands were being wiped out. This pine rust disease is fatal to American pine trees. But it's existed in Europe for centuries, possibly longer, and the trees there have built up over the years a natural resistance to it. Nobody thought there'd be a problem when European pine saplings were brought over to the United States. And at first, there wasn't a problem, because these trees can't give the disease to each other. They need a host to act as a disease vector, and that host is the black currant. Black currants don't normally die of rust, but they can contract the disease. And in the spring, when they start being planted, they get the disease from pine trees. And that's not a problem. But at the end of the year, when they shed their leaves for the winter, 
the disease goes back to uninfected pine trees and in the United States, because they had no resistance, it killed them very quickly, often within a single season. Whole stands, whole forests were wiped out by this disease. It took them a while to figure out what was happening, but when they did, the solution was simple. Ban the planting and farming of black currants. Ban the entire plant from North America. And starting in 1911, that's exactly what they did. And as you can imagine, back before refrigeration and shipping, the flavor just disappeared in North America, while it flourished in Europe. Our candy cooling table has done its job. The candy has now been changed into sort of the consistency of a thin Play-Doh, and it's ready to go through the rollers. Why not take all of me? We have one, maybe two more videos that we have in the can that were made at our old location. But you should start seeing the new ones coming out in the next couple of weeks. We have some cool things planned. Well, the sugar needs to be made into ropes because the machine is not designed to take blobs of candy, but ropes of candy to press. We're keeping our main mass of candy warmer, but then we're going to let it cool off a bit while we roll the logs before it goes through the press. There's another type of current called the red current, which is a relation. But if you live here in the United States, I can almost hear what you're thinking. In the supermarket shelves, there are dried currants. Well, those are Xanti currants. They're actually not currants. They're fake currants. They're raisins made from tiny grapes, the same type of grape roughly that they make champagne out of. I guess when we couldn't grow currants directly, people found an alternating current to use. If you ever make it by Tallahassee, we'll hope you visit us and see us make candy in person. We're at our new location at 1355 Market Street, which is directly across from the old location. We're now serving breakfast, which means we open at 7 a.m. If you'd like to try our candy and not come to visit us, you can still do that by visiting our website at www.pd.net. And if you can, hang around to the end of the video. We got something after the credits. Your goodbyes left me with eyes that cry. Let's fast forward a bit, and we come to 1970. About then, the U.S. Congress decided to lift most of its restrictions on black currants. You see, the white pine only grows in the Northeast United States. So they left the banning of black currant growth to places where it could affect pine trees. And they let the states individually decide whether they'll let the black currants to be grown or not. Because of this, Many states in the Pacific Northwest and the Southern United States now allow the currants to be grown, but in the Northeast, the ban remains. Now that everything is pressed, all we have to do is drop the pieces, break them up, and we have the perfect candy. And I know what you're going to ask. What does black currant taste like? You know, it's very hard to describe flavors in words. I wish we had a way to describe flavors in flavors. But I can tell you it tastes a little citrusy, it tastes a little berry-like. It tastes like a combination of fruits I can't quite put my finger on. Perhaps some of the people who grew up with this flavor or who are more familiar with it than I can chime in at this point. But I can tell you, it's delicious. If you want to taste blackcurrant for yourself, you can get our blackcurrant candy at www.pd.net. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to us here on YouTube. We're trying to get 100,000 subscribers so they'll give us a cool plaque. And if you want to, also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and all the rest of the stuff. If you're ever in Tallahassee, we'd love to see you. And thank you for watching. But stay tuned for just a bit. Behind me is a field of sugarcane. And sugarcane is what we're going to use today. Sugarcane grows here in Tallahassee, it's been grown for hundreds of years and has been used to produce a material called cane syrup, which is cooked down juice of the sugarcane, this grass that is growing behind me. The sugarcane juice is delicious and is used in this part of the country like um, up north they use maple syrup, they put it on pancakes, they bake with it, 
They do lots of delicious things. And we're gonna cook that cane syrup down further and turn it into candies. This is all using techniques from the 1800s. Yeah. Like that, we're all good.